Uh, greetings and welcome to our weekly educational rounds here at Seclair, an integrative holistic psychiatric facility located outside of Delmont, Pennsylvania. My name is Jim Ellermeyer. I'm a behavioral health therapist, and today I'm joined by two of my colleagues. On my left would be... Brooke from Seton Hill University. And on my right... I'm Shannon. I'm from Chatham University. And for those followers of this podcast, you can find them at the Educational Rounds on the Seclair website. What we do every week is we attempt to bring some type of real practical knowledge that you can incorporate into your life, not just telling you to do something because we told you to do it. And keeping in mind again that Seclair is an integrative holistic psychiatric facility where we treat people, we don't treat diagnoses, and take a holistic view, a complete picture of the individual. So it's a, it's a bit of a strange world, is it not, Shannon? It is. And sometimes we, what happens is we get into situations that no one can predict. So quite often we get into situations where there's been a, there's a tragedy occurred or where there's been some type of a mishap and people are acting with a with an emotional mind. Could you explain to people what a, what an emotional mind would be, Shannon? Um, an emotional mind would be when you allow your emotions to take over your actions and you basically um, don't take into consider the rational side of your mind uh, because when you take into consider uh, consideration in your emotions and ration, that's called a wise mind. So it would be the opposite of a wise mind. Sure. So emotional minds tend to react rather than respond, do they not? And in emotionally charged situations, it's only natural for people to respond emotionally. So what we're going to be talking about today is psychiatric first aid. And in the immediate aftermath of a traumatizing event, uh, the idea is to provide both a safe and secure place both physically and emotionally are paramount to two individuals. So, and crisis counseling serves to prevent development of, of future issues in the order. So, when we talk a little bit about uh, psychological first aid, what are we talking about? Um, so, whenever we talk about how to provide first aid psychologically for someone who's just experienced a trauma or mishap, um, this is consisting of contact and engagement. So you want to make contact with the person and engage them in conversation. You want to make sure that they know that they are safe and comforted so that they are no longer in the trauma area. Um, you want to provide them with practical assistance. So this is asking them, what can I do for you right now? You want to con er, connect them with social supports. So a lot of times their fir the first thing on their mind is, where is my family? Where are my friends? You want to provide assistance to them to help find them. Um, and you also want to provide them information on coping. So this is, they're probably acting out of an emotional mind right now, very upset that they just experienced a trauma. So you want to give them information on how to cope with that immediate emotion. So this could be anything from telling them to breathe with their belly, which is diaphragmatic breathing. Um, you can also have them relax, which is using a bilateral stimulation. So just squeezing their hands gently back and forth. Um, you can also um, make sure that you are providing behavior to them to make them feel more calm. Could you say so, a little bit more about that? Yeah, so the way that I'm acting towards them in my conversation is going to have them react the same way. So if I'm speaking stress to them, if I'm freaking out, they're going to do the same to me. So if I approach them in a calm manner, speak in a slow, gentle voice, this will um, make them more calm. So this is called entrainment. Entrainment, so that's using your behavior, that's modeling behavior to help other people de-escalate. So what we want to do, what we want to do, Shannon, is de-escalate the situation, is that correct? That's so correct. So when, when you're a responder to this type of situation, whether it be uh, some type of tragic event, uh, perhaps dealing with somebody who's had the loss of a significant other, uh, what are some of the do's and don'ts in these situations? Well, the first thing you want to do is before you act, uh, while you're overwhelmed with emotion, you want to stop and sit down you want to think about what's going on and observe your surroundings and you want to make a plan. 
And so then when you um, are ready and you approach someone who might perhaps need um, consoling, the first thing you want to do is when you sit or stand, you want to be square to the person and you want to have a very open posture and you want to lean forward a little bit. You want to make eye contact and you want to be relaxed. So what, we're, what you're saying is it's important that we allow the, make these people understand that they're being heard. Absolutely. That they're being heard. They have a story to tell. They have an emotionally charged story and it's best for, and, it, and it's so gratifying to have someone hear it. Right. And so some do's and don'ts are first off, you do not want to self deploy. So, and so what we're talking about there, Shannon, is simply because a tragedy occurred or somebody has lost a loved one, do we naturally assume that they want us there? Right. Yes, our, we our, do. Our, our natural tendency is to, why well, we want to rush in to save it. Well, perhaps we don't want to self-deploy. Right. And so going along with that, you do not want to lead the inv individual. You want to let uh, their needs guide you. And so um, another thing you do not want to do is that assume that everyone who has uh, experienced a tragedy or a crisis wants or needs to talk. And along with that, you also don't want to assume that um, all individuals are traumatized. Um, so again, it goes along with the idea that you sort of let the individual come to you uh, with their needs. And lastly, you do want to make yourself visible and available because that's when you'll be of most help, um, especially when you're acting with a wise mind. Certainly. So quite often when there's a tragedy, there's, there's also grief. And quite often people, people weep, they shed tears. And our first opportunity is what our first instinct is, is to, is to sympathize with them, is to sympathize. And all sympathy does is participate in, in a person's misery. It protects and participate in a person's misery. And we want, to, we want to have them stop crying, do we not? However, could you talk to us a little bit about grief and, and tears? Sure. Um, so tears are the heart's attempt at healing. They water the dry and arid places of our souls. They bring us back to life and healing. Our feelings are trying to expose our pain, but do not do them the injustice of denial. So when people stuff their emotions for longer periods of time, Shannon, that can lead to what? Um, it can lead to them becoming overwhelmed and they can um, act unrationally. Indeed, indeed, when we get an emotional mind and stuffing in and stuffing feelings and buffering them, what do some, some people use drugs, some people use alcohol, and stuffing these feelings inside your love self can lead to, lead to depression, sure. okay? Can exasperate the events, the tragic events that are already uh, overwhelming and lead it into some type of a condition such as post-traumatic stress disorder. Okay, so excellent, thank you, thank you. So what we wanna do is we wanna to talk to you, remember you're the responder, so remember you can't con always control how you feel. However, you can control how you react to these feelings. So it's important for you as a responder to be able to label and identify how you're feeling and how you're thinking before you get into a situation with another person. Sit down and say, and do a self-evaluation of yourself. How am I feeling? What am I thinking? Am I in fit spiritual and emotional condition to deal with this type of tragedy. And if you are not, then you're exasperating the, exasperating the situations. So what we want to do is, like these young ladies said, is we want to model behavior. When we go into a place, we want to not add to the intenseness. We don't want to add to the grief. What we want to do is be a calm and, and gentle and center soul. So the idea is, is before you go in there, prepare yourself, do that self-evaluation, do those breathing techniques, and perhaps uh, connect with the divine. Uh, I hope that you got something out of these uh, little tips. And as always, at the end of every podcast, we give a free prescription. Do we not, Brooke? Yep. And that would be fruits, nuts, and vegetables. Unplug your television and take up fishing. And for a truly mindful experience, we ask that you fish without bait. Your charge, as usual, is do a kindness for yourself and do a kindness to another. Until then, namaste.